Good morning and welcome and a happy new year. Let's hope it's a better one than uh, 2020. I hope you have uh, some bread and a little bit of wine to join us in this communion service. Um, and also I hope you have uh, a sight of one of the uh, service sheets. Um, if you don't, please let me know and I can send you one electronically or by post or whichever. <clears throat> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. And we say together our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and we say together the Gloria as a thanksgiving. Glory be to God in heaven, peace on earth to all mankind, Father, Heavenly King, Creator, God of power, undefined. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God, by faith we know. Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Jesus Christ, you are most high. With the Father and the Spirit, Trinity to you we cry. <coughs> now, collect. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, as we walk forward into the new year, enable us to step forward boldly. Enable us to hold you in, the, in, in, in our hearts as we go forward. Enable your spirit to lead us and guide us as we seek to do your will in 2021. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John 1 verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. <clears throat> In him was life, and, the, and that, that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light that all men might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Down through the ages, Humanity has built up images of God from within the corners of our minds. We've created idols of silver, brass, wood and gold, 
hoping to capture the essence of a supreme being who can be credited with our blessings and cursings in life. From the great pyramids of Egypt to the charms and dolls of voodoo, from Michelangelo's ceiling in the Sistine Chapel to the multicoloured stained glass windows of our local churches. Humanity has sought to capture the divine in some kind of recognisable form. We are a people who need visible evidence, unfortunately, and especially evidence of God's existence. I suppose if most Christians were asked to draw a picture of God, they'd draw a kindly um, Father Christmas type figure, but with white robes rather than red. We also want a God who we can identify with, that can be with us and go with us during our day-to-day -day life. We may not have built false idols, golden calves, but we too want a manifest manifestation of God's power and love here on earth. We all want a God who will bless us and be with us in our comings and goings. We all want some visible sign that will be with us as we go forward into the uncertainty of 2021. For humanity, God has to be real. We need some sign, some burning bush, and some miraculous proof that God is with us and for us. And although we are called to walk by faith, we've always tended to worship what we can see. We're attracted to a God who looks like us, thinks like us, and often acts like us from the blue-eyed, blonde-haired Christ of Europe to the blue-black dreadlock-wearing uh, Jesus of Africa. We all have mental images of this invisible God we worship from Sunday to Sunday. <clears throat> As someone once said, God created humankind in his image, so we've returned the favour and made him into our own image. Our gods tend to re resemble us. We've often attempted to conjure images of God that appeal to us. Some of us worship an angry and a judgmental God. Perhaps because we're an angry people, frustrated with the world and ourselves. Some of us have created a vengeful God. A God of fire and brimstone, perhaps because we're unforgiving and lack love. And still others have a liberal, liberal uh, passive God, perhaps because of the free lifestyle and wayward living that they value and tolerate. Our gods tend to resemble us. And yet, God tells us that no one has ever seen God. The true God cannot be made visible by any kind of image formed in our minds or conjured from our deepest imaginations. He remains invisible. No one has ever laid eyes on him or even been allowed to. Moses, we're told, in the wilderness came the closest, but even he, we're told, only caught a glimpse of God's back. So no one has ever seen God. So we're left to picture our God through the use of descriptions and verbal imagery, which are limited by our vocabulary. And this makes it very difficult as we try to tell non-Christians about God. What are they going to make of phrases such as, he's like a refiner's fire, or he's the living water that quenches our thirst, or he's the Alpha and the Omega? Even God himself could only describe himself to Moses as being the I am who I am. There aren't suitable human words that can come close to giving us a visible image of God. He still remains unseen. However, the Gospel says that at a certain point in time, God did actually become visible to us. It was a historical event that changed time itself. When BC became AD, the Creator became part of his creation. People saw him, they heard him, they touched him. This is what we call the Incarnation, God made visible, not as an idol, but in a life, a human life, the life of Jesus Christ. 
But my question is, why throughout all the Gospels and Epistles, no one saw fit to actually come up with a physical description? <clears throat> why is it that we're left absolutely clueless as to what our Saviour looked like? Was he tall, dark, handsome? Was he ugly with a big hooked nose? Was he so nondescript that he'd been described as ordinary? Why in this age of science and technology are we still asked to worship what we can't see? I think John gives us some answers when he writes, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. He, John points out to us that um, it's not important what Christ looked like when he lived among us. What really matters is what he did. His actions outweighed uh, or outweigh our need to know what he looked like. And this is still a difficult thing for us to cope with because we're a people who major in the superficial. We try to look our best and we're attracted to those who look good. For us, the starlet outranks the homely philanthropist. For us, flesh and blood still matters a great deal. <clears throat> what initially attracted you to members of the opposite sex? It probably wasn't the things that they did because you didn't know that at first glance. It was the way that they looked. And it would be days, weeks or even months down the line before you could appreciate their true character. The fact remains, though, that people were attracted to Jesus, not because of his physical appearance, but because, as John puts it, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In Israel's past, there had been times when, although the people hadn't seen God's face, they had seen his glory. And that representation of uh, uh, God's glory had left them amazed and speechless. The pillar of cloud by day and fire by night during the flight from Egypt assured them that God was with them. This is the same glory, John says, that Jesus had. John says that to see Jesus was to see God. His description pales into insignificance when we imagine how awesome, yet at the same time how humble Jesus must have been. What people saw in him was beyond their human imagination. We didn't see him lying in a manger, healing the blind, feeding the 5,000, dying on a cross or rising on Easter morning. So for us, it means that we can only really see God when we look at his acts in and through Jesus. Our salvation comes down to two things, grace and truth. But when it comes to truth, we have to admit that if our lives were a goodness exam, we'd fail. Because God's pass mark for heavenly occupation is 100% goodness, and none of us will get even close. Without Jesus, we haven't hope. And this is where grace comes in. That's where it comes into this equation. Someone once came up with a mnemonic for grace. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. He gave his life in payment for ours. His life was the final commandment that brought all the others together. Love. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lays down his life for his friends. God in Christ died for me because he loved me. He died for me so that I could live. Both you and I have someone who loves us not for what we're worth or because we praise him. He loves us just as we are, just for being us. He's not concerned with how we look or what we have. He just loves us. And because of his love, his grace and his mercy, we can see his glory every day. <clears throat> look out of your window. Look out of your window at the birds coming 
to feed in your garden, perhaps at your bird feeder, and you'll see God's glory. Take a walk along the roadside and look at the growing things and you'll see God's glory. Look in, into the sea at the magnificence of life there and you'll see God's glory. Every day when there's food on our table and clothes on our back, we can thank him for his glory. As we look to the future in the assurance of his love, we can thank him for his glory. We don't need to see the face of God or have a physical description of Jesus when he came to live among us. It's enough. It's enough for us to know that he is who he is and that he loves us more than we can ever imagine. <clears throat> we now affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus and a great light shone in our darkness. Help us to walk by that light. Help us to be the children of the light and to bring that light into our part of this wonderful world of yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray that the church, and particularly this church, may be a beacon of light in these dark times. May our words and our actions enlighten all those who are in darkness. May the church be a living example of the good news of Jesus. And we pray for all ministers of word and sacrament that their ministry will enlighten those in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember places in the world where darkness seems to prevail, where cheap labour is exploited, where the land is raped and where forests are destroyed, where our seas are overfished and where fertile land is reverting to desert. And so we pray for the ecologists and all those who seek to care for our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are living in the dark place of doubt and despair, especially at this time. The depressed and those who are physically sick, we ask you to bring comfort and healing and to change their darkness into a new dawn of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our we remember all who have died, for those who have shone out as lights in our world, for those loved ones who've enriched and brightened our lives. May they rest in the brightness of your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> We come now to the peace. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. Our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. <clears throat> His spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, those who have much faith and those who have little. It is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him here. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. We say our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. And do have a really safe and a happy new year.